It's Wednesday, the 30th of June. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. And if you're English, how are you feeling this morning? Uh, unlike yesterday, the computer didn't eat my script today, uh, so that is not likely to make me any more coherent, but we'll do our best. Uh, we will get to the news headlines and other bits and pieces in just a second. But first, let's pause and give thanks to all those celebrities born unto this world on this day in history. And it's many happy returns to Mike Tyson, the baddest man on the planet and the youngest ever winner of the World Heavyweight title. People think I wear these headphones for audio purposes. In truth, I wear them just in case Iron Mike pops by for a snack. Uh, it's a happy birthday also to half man, half salmon, Michael Phelps, who has swum his way to an astonishing 23 Olympic gold medals. Far more importantly, though, on this day of days, uh, congratulations to West Ham's Declan Rice, who dragged the rest of the England team to an historic victory over Germany last night. Uh, I'd just like to point out that football superstars like Ronaldo, Pogba, Mbappe, Kroos and Muller are all on their way home. But the four West Ham players that started the tournament, Ukraine's Yarmolenko, the Czech Republic's Suchek and Sufal, and England captain in everything but name Declan Rice, are still there. West Ham United, biggest club in the world. A labourer who bludgeoned his foreman to death on a construction site in central London has been found guilty of murder. Construction Inquiry is reporting this morning that 24-year-old Elton Sifa was found guilty of murdering 47-year-old John Woodward at the Old Bailey on Tuesday. The court heard how Woodward was employed on a, as a site foreman by a refurbishment, a refurbishment contractor sorry, on a building site in Hatton Garden, London, EC1. Sefer was a labourer who had worked with Woodward for around seven months prior to the murder on a number of building sites. The pair apparently got on well, but a colleague said there was some tension between the two after Woodward had become annoyed that Sefer had cleared away their tools early the previous day. On the 17th of April 2018, both men had arrived for work at the site in Hatton Garden. Uh, Sifa and Woodward were working on the fourth floor of the site. Shortly after two o'clock in the afternoon, Sifa was seen on camera walking up the stairs from the staff room to the first floor. As, as he walked, he appeared to be checking behind him. He then assaulted Woodward with a metal scaffolding pole, striking him a number of times on the head. Sifa then fled the building site, leaving Woodward lying injured on the deserted fourth floor area. Uh, emergency services attended but could do nothing to save uh, Woodward and he died at the scene. A, a post-mortem examination subsequently confirmed he died as a result of blunt force trauma to the head. Uh, he'd also suffered lacerations to his neck, possibly caused by a blood-stained Stanley knife found nearby. Uh, Sefer will be sentenced later. Uh, no, actually, he'll be sentenced in the same court next month. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. The powered access industry is once again setting the safety standard and the global demolition industry would do well to follow their lead. The latest International Powered Access Federation Global Safety Report analyzes the main causes of serious injuries and fatalities occurring when using powered access machines to conduct temporary work at height. This highlights the need to gather more near-miss data from across the industry worldwide to help avoid the most common types of serious accident in the future. While the report indicates the main causes of serious injuries and deaths while using powered access equipment have not changed significantly across the most uh, recent two years of data, electrocutions have increased slightly to become the joint most common cause, along with falls over uh, falls from the platform. My apologies. Over the whole, whole five-year period, 2016 to 2020, the most common causes of fatal accidents were falls from the platform and electrocution, electrocutions, both accounting for around 23% of deaths, followed by entrapments at 19%, uh, overturns and tip over at 12%, and being struck by another machine at nine, uh, sorry, 6%. Um, in the early days of the accident reporting project, 
which launched back in 2012. The majority of reports were received from IPAF's UK membership. As the project enters its second decade, reports are now coming in from around the world, with reports re recovered from uh, 19 countries uh, across the two most recent years of data gathering, and more than 25 countries worldwide in the past five years. This year, the report has been presented in a different way with an executive summary giving a global overview, overview, followed by detailed data spreads looking at each of the six main accident types broken down by location, machine type, industry sector, including lost time incident analysis specific to each incident classification. The demolition industry really would do well to, to learn the lessons from the Power Access Centre. Uh, as we've reported previously, the current president of the Institute of Demolition Engineers, Richard Dolman, has been pressing for a... Uh, the creation of a near miss register in the demolition sector for quite some time. Um, we really hope that the wider demolition industry follows his lead and adopts a similar system to that employed by those good folks over at IPAF. There we go. Now, about a week ago, we hosted a live stream to coincide with the virtual launch of the new Komatsu PC490 HRD demolition excavator, uh, equipped with the new K100 boom change system. Uh, that event was well attended, and the machine certainly looked amazing. Um, and now those fine folks over at Komatsu have provided us with the actual video of the new machine. Uh, we've put it through our video editor, who's had a bit of a play with it, and we're now ready to share it with the watching world. Are you ready? Good, because here we go. That tune certainly wakes you up in the morning, doesn't it? Um, if you'd like to know more about the uh, K100 boom system on the PC490 HRD, um, you'll find a link in the chat right now. Um, go and have a look. It is a very impressive piece of machine machinery. I, I, I find that the term game changer and uh, game changer in particular is used far too often in, in uh, industry circles, but I do think the K100 boom system has the potential to be as big a game changer as quick couplers in the wider attachment industry. Now, have you ever wanted to work for a cutting edge innovative demolition company, one with a formidable reputation for its industrial demolition capabilities, a company that's among the nine firms named on the massive Teesside Steelworks demolition framework? Then you're in luck. As you can see, those fine folks over at KDC Contractors are seeking CCDO demolition operatives for work up and down the UK. If this is for you, then drop them your CV at kdc at kdc.co.uk. Uh, the best of luck if you apply. I reckon these jobs are likely to be highly sought after. Now, yesterday's show was so filled with excavator goodness that we just didn't have time to look at the hot new demolition project leads uncovered by the research team over at Market Intelligence Provider, the Builders Conference. And so to make amends, today we have not one, but two project leads for your delectation and delight. The first is for the demolition of the former Offerton High School in Stockport. The project is being overseen by Stockport Metropolitan, Metropolitan Borough Council and main contractors are literally queuing around the block to win the £13 million new build portion of the works. Uh, we understand that ISG has been named as the preferred bidder, but at the time of reporting, a demolition contractor has yet to be appointed. 
Sticking with the education sector, a part of Milton Keynes College is also scheduled for demolition as part of a £3 million redevelopment and extension. Ash Construction and Savvy Construction are thought to be vying for the new build element, but once again, a suitably competent demolition contractor has yet to be appointed. The client in this instance is Milton Keynes College. Uh, you can find out more about these project leads and many more just like them over at buildersconference.co.uk. Speaking, speaking of the Builders Conference, and I think Neil Edwards may even be in the chat at the moment, at the Builders Conference, Neil Edwards is going to be our guest on tomorrow's tomorrow morning show. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, the BC Live League Table of Construction Contract Awards ticked over the £7 billion mark for the month of June uh, yesterday afternoon. So tune in tomorrow to find out who the big winners are on what's been yet another bumper month for the construction sector. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. That pretty much wraps up the show for today. Um, I am going to uh, go over to the chat in a second and, and have a look at that once I've played the outro. Uh, but two very quick points for your diary. As I mentioned earlier, um, tomorrow's show will be slightly longer than usual as I'm going to be joined by Builders Conference CEO Neil Edwards to look back at that bumper month for construction contract awards. And on Friday evening, the second episode of Demolition World will drop. This one features Rye Demolition, a company that has pinned its colours firmly to the sustainability mast. Uh, second aside the poor quality of the host this guy uh, it's going to be a crappy, cracking episode i watched it yesterday and i have to say even though i'm in it it's pretty damn good um i am off now to speak to the bbc see the circles i'm moving the bb is in the process of researching an item on sustainable construction and demolition so guess who they called yep this guy uh OK, until then, I'll be back here same time, same place on the morrow. So stay safe. Look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. Uh, I will be back into the chat in just a second. But let's roll this.